business. But I believe you have to make a plan. You can't do anything. You can't just, um, you know, think you're going to do a business. You really need to write it down. That's what I tell everybody. Write it down, set goals, and make it happen. And that's what I did. And here I am now. Uh, This is your girl Coco T and we are excited today. Welcome to TAP TV, a part of the Abolitionist Pledge. You know what we do. The Abolitionist Pledge is all about uniting people with an agenda to abolish racism in our community and across the world. And we do that in a lot of ways. Today, we're doing that by showcasing a minority business. And we are here today with Dr. Sir as well. He's our co-host. Coco T, what's going on, man? I'm excited about the opportunity to be back with Tap TV and everything we're doing with the Abolitionist Pledge. We know that this is black is about black community, black culture, and really uplifting our own people, right? And I'm excited because partnering with Abolitionist Pledge really highlights what we are doing as African Americans. So, and I'm even more excited to have a conversation with Miss CC and really talk about this product because those of you who are listening in. You want to tune. You want to tune in. Not only tune in, but you want to reach out to this young lady because she got something for you. I'm telling you, it's about to get saucy. It's about to get saucy. And if you want to promote your business as well, it is available to you too. We want to highlight your business at tapentrepreneurs.com. Log in and be a part of what we're doing. It's not just a moment. It's a movement. It's a movement. And we are here today with Cece from Cece's Private Pieces. Welcome, Cece. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Um, I want to say that first and foremost, um, I really, really, really appreciate the opportunity. Um, thank you for having me. Of course, of course. Now tell us a little bit about your business. I know it gets really saucy and I can't wait to get into it. So tell us a little bit more about your business. Well, um, I am CC, of course. Um, I am the owner of CC's Private Pieces. It is a, um, well, what I do is I sell lingerie, loungewear, sleepwear, um, adult novelties as well. Um, I cater to everyone. I got, I have something for everyone. I sell extra small through 4X because I believe in all shapes and sizes are beautiful. Um, I also have, um, well, I just actually started tapping into a little bit more um, men products. So um, if you visit the website, you'll see a couple sprinkles of um, boxers and things like that. All right. Well, before we jump into what you sell, let, let's hear a little bit about you. Yes, I mean, where are you from and, and you know, how'd you grow and things of that nature? Okay. Uh, well, I am from St. Louis, Missouri. All right, big ups. You know that question. What, what, what high school? What, you know? I graduated from Hazelwood Central. Class All right. Okay. <laughs> Stand up. All right. Um, I started my business in 2019. Um, my goal and the reason why I started it is because I believe um, in, you know, building women's self-esteem. Um, a lot of us are uh, busy at work, you know, we have kids and we sometimes forget about ourselves and um, I always like to say bringing our sexy back so we sort of kind of lose it. Um, also people in relationships and you know marriages and everything like that, um, you know, we all just get caught up in daily life. Um, so I just like to work with people and bring their sexy back. <laughs> Awesome. Now, was there someone in particular or a moment in, in particular that influenced you starting your business? Yes. Um, I, my auntie, um, she is a cancer survivor. Um, actually, shout out to all the cancer survivors. Mm -hmm. um, yes. But she, um, of course, had to um, have, you know, surgery. And so um, she has, um, you know, one, she has to have one of her breasts removed. Um, so actually, that is something that inspired me. Um, a lot of women, you know, during that time, they lose their sexiness and just, 
you know, have self-esteem problems and everything like that. So um, what I want to eventually do is um, work with cancer patients and design my own um, lingerie pieces for those women who may, you know, suffer from those, maybe have one breast or two breasts or just, you know, just maybe having a problem with that. And that's something that nobody has. So um, that's ultimately my goal. That's what I started with doing. And then, so that's ultimately my goal. Wow. That's amazing. That is, you know, and, and that's a great testament for the community and how you support your community that supported you, you know, and so big ups and we'll continue to pray for both your aunt as well as those who are a part of the cancer community and those who are survivors, you know, so, yeah. you know, when, when you started um, CC's Intimate Pieces, um, um, tell me a little bit more about the beginning of it and and how you came about with the idea and and not just not just um, this part, but even the business plan, because that's one of the challenges yeah. I think a lot of um, entrepreneurs, especially young Black entrepreneurs in our community, that's what they struggle with. They have these great yeah. ideas, inspiration, but yeah. business is difficult. Yeah, it is. Um, well, I also work um, for the government by day. And um, if you work for the government, you know a lot of stuff is built on contracts and everything. Um, we had lost our contract. I, I've always loved um, to be cute, you know, when I go to bed and everything. So I've always shopped for, you know, cute lingerie pieces or just cute um, night pieces. That was, that's always been me. Um, so when my job was talking about, um, well, we actually did lose our contract. When they said that we lost our contract, I was like, well, let me, you know, I might as well just do something that I love to do. I might as well just, let me, it, it, you know, it was planted in my head. So I sat on it for a minute. Um, I wrote down stuff. I didn't just jump out there. Um, I knew what I wanted to do. I did a lot of research um, as far as what I needed to do to, you know, even sell in Missouri. Um, and it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. A lot of people, they don't tell you um you know, really what to do, the ins and the outs. I will say I've learned a whole lot <laughs> these mm. past couple of years. Um, and it's 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 a lot with business. Um, you work harder for yourself than you've ever worked before. Um, but I, I made a plan. I wrote everything down and each week I would do something different. Um, if I knew I had to go over here and um maybe apply for my business license. That's, that's one thing I would do for that week. And I would make sure every week I would do something different. And then I just, everything all came together at once. <laughs> and then I started, I had an opportunity to go to the mall in Illinois. And that's where I actually started in, in the mall. So I um, had that, I was blessed enough to have that experience to even start in the, in the mall, um, you know, with my business. But I believe you have to make a plan. You can't, do anything you can't just um you know think you're gonna do a business you really need to write it down that's what I tell everybody write it down set goals and make it happen and that's what I did and here I am now um, I'm, you know I'm going on my third year that's amazing that's amazing let me ask you this was there a, sp a particular business tool that you use for funding were you able to find a program to help you uh, start your business you know what, honestly, my, I got it out the mud, as they say. <laughs> um, I used my overtime money. I we did I did a lot of overtime um on my on my other job in the daytime. So I actually just used that money mm -hmm. to start my business. And um I honestly I have not had any government funding um or anything like that. I've just been blessed to, you know. With a, like I say, with another job, and I just kept on, you know, using my money that I made to keep going. You know, so many times, and I agree with you, I was just speaking to some students about the idea that, you know, we have to invest in ourselves. 
-hmm. and how important that is. So many times we spend years upon years investing our intellectual knowledge and capital and and gifts into other spaces, but we don't invest in ourselves until something tragic happens. And then when that happens, then all of a sudden we just like, okay, you know, I gotta, you know, I gotta do this, you know, whatever the case is, but being very intentional is critical. So I love that statement. I got it out the mud, right? We got to get dirty. We got to get grimy, right? About it. I started from the bottom, you know, it it, it, it makes me appreciate it more, you know? Yeah. You know, so when, when you're looking at your designs, do you create your designs or um, how do you come about with, um, with bringing your inventory? Um, I actually have vendors. Um, I order from everywhere. So what I do is um, I normally try to come out with collections. Um, You know, like I sell women and plus size. So um, if I find it in women, I try to find it in my curvy queens sizes as well. Um, It's so much, um, so many styles out here. Um, I like to try to bring a variety. Um, As I was explaining to Teresa before, um, everybody is not into lingerie really. Um, so, you know, they might just want a, a sexy night sleep, you know, night sleepwear. Um, so I try to cater and do, that's why everybody likes me. I'll say that because I have a variety. Um, I, again, like I said, I try to cater to everybody. I try to cater to all audiences. So I just, I don't, I just have a niche for it. I guess, I don't know if it's cute, <laughs> then I'll, I'll order it. And then I also have brand ambassadors, so I, I have an eye for it. Um, mm-hmm. If if I know that something is going to be cute or it's going to look right on my brand ambassadors, if it'll accent their bodies, mm-hmm. then I make sure that I, I get that, that item. Well, CC, I have to ask you, you know, I'm, I'm one of those girls that struggle a little bit with, with the confidence to wear lingerie I'm gonna tell you diva I want all the lights out okay <laughs> so <laughs> you tell me <laughs> what what tip do you have for me I know we, you kind of touched on you gave me some magic of your CC magic yesterday and I want you to share that what tips do you have for for divas like me well you have to love yourself first and foremost you, you gotta you you have to own it you gotta own it I, I'll say okay. that um, and honestly, right. I love, 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 love working with people like you. Um, <laughs> I start you guys off with um, a cute nighty, you know, initially mm-hmm. at first. I sort of kind of like warm you up, a sexy one though. It might have mm-hmm. like a cute, some cute shorts, but it's still covered up because that's that's the, you know, that's the thing. You, a lot of women, they want to be covered up, but they still want to be sexy and present themselves sexy all in the same, you know, thing. Mm-hmm. So um, I would either start two ladies off with a cute sleepwear nighty or um, body stocking lingerie. It's something, it's a hot seller for me. And um, basically it is, it's like um, your tights that you will put on, but it's, it, it's actually, a, it's a body stocking lingerie. So it'll cover your whole body and it's going to conform to your body. So it's just going to make you feel more comfortable and it's more covered up but it still gives off that sexy, that sexy vibe. And normally when I, once you put that on, like I say, it gives you a, a sexy tone. It makes you feel good about yourself and it makes your mind, you know, wonder and it, you end up buying other stuff later on. That's what ends up happening with my ladies. So okay. I, I start them off with, you know, something still sexy and sleek, but to still make them feel comfortable. Okay, great. Those are great tips. You know, so when, when we're thinking about this industry, right, most of the time, most people go to other brands and I won't mention their names because we're not giving them any pub, right? But so mm-hmm. how competitive is this industry? Because, I mean, it, it seems like everybody is, is <laughs> doing pop-ups, but, but they're not staying as long as you have. So how competitive is it? It's very competitive, um, but you have to have confidence in your product. Mm-hmm. And that's one thing that I do. Um, I'm not going to put anything out that I wouldn't wear or that my brand ambassadors already have not, you know, worn or we have not tested out. Um, 
you have to believe in yourself. And that's that's really what it's about. Um, when you think about when you go to the grocery store, um, you got bunny bread and they're all in the same row, right? You don't, they don't break us up. They don't break us up. You you all, you got bunny bread, you got wonder bread, you maybe have schnooks brand, whatever brand, but they're all next to each other. You have to do something that sets yourself apart, that, that makes people want to shop with you or makes people want to buy that certain bread, right? So that's what I, that's what I do. I, every, I bring a, I have to say, and I'm not trying to toot my own horn or anything, but I bring oh, no, a, go ahead. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I bring an experience um, when I go to these pop-up shops or when I host events, um, you have to do something, make a memory with these people um, that's going to make them continue to shop with you. And that's what I do. I make them feel comfortable. I make them feel sexy. I make them feel good about themselves. You're going to always remember somebody. You'll always remember how they make you feel. Think about it. And when you go in life, somebody make you mad, they make you feel really good about yourself. You're going to remember that and you're going to continue to deal with them if it was a good feeling. And that's what I try to do. I try to make them feel good because a lot of times people are having self-esteem issues or they may be having, you know, relationship problems. And and I tell everybody, I, I don't, you don't have to have a man to wear my products or be married or anything. It's about yourself and how you feel about you because it starts with you. And I'm big on that. So I, I, I preach that all the time. You know, when I talk about my lingerie, that's the first, oh, I don't have a man. You don't need to have a man. Love yourself. Put it on for you. Because that's what I did. I walk around the house all the time and I, it just makes me feel sexy. <laughs> that's, the, that's my goal. That's what I want to do when I, when I bring people, when they come shop with me. I want you to leave my table or when you go home and you put it on, I want you to feel sexy. If, if you don't feel sexy, I didn't do something right. <laughs> we, we talked a, a little bit yesterday and I was asking you, but you do have a supportive spouse. And um, how has that been and navigating that with your business? Great, actually. Um, you know, again, it is lingerie. So a lot of people, um, they, you know, with their spouses, they don't really like, you know, their woman maybe, you know, being, having their body out um, to the public. But um, we are secure, you know, <laughs> in, in everything. He knows I'm not you know, doing anything. Um, I'm really running the business. That's all, strictly that's what it is. It's business only. Um, so he's been very supportive. He doesn't mind at all. Um, he actually sells products for me. You see him. <laughs> there we go. Hey, you know, did you shop CC's private pieces? Here's a card. I appreciate that. <laughs> that's that's awesome. Awesome. Yeah, you got to have unity in the house. You got to be yeah. supportive of one another because it's one vision, right? One yeah. vision that price, that provides provision for the yeah. whole house. So, and, and that's where it goes, right? Mm -hmm. um, I, I want to talk a little bit about, because we've been talking about this lingerie side and you got me, my interest peaked here a little <laughs> bit, you know, for the man side, right? Because I, I went on the website and I've been looking and I said, okay, let's talk about this man side of yours uh, that you're starting to um, really grow. So how'd you get into, um, how'd you get into selling items for men? How is that going? You know, what what what's the environment like when you working with men in this space? Well, okay, yes. Um, his and hers is something that's hot right now. Um, couples want to match, you know, with their significant other. Um, so I started off with just you know regular boxers initially, um, but I sort of kind of turned it up just a tad um, on my last show that I had in October. Um, if you view uh, some of my videos, you'll see some of the men who had on um, more a sex, it, it, it more of a sexier boxer, um, made out of um, cotton, but it, it it was like some had like maybe zippers where you could sort of kind of spice up the bedroom a little bit. Um, it's 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 going great. So far, I should say a little slow because I have I don't have too many products and I'm still working on my marketing. Um, as far as that, I feel like once I boost up my marketing a little bit better, um, my sales will go up with that. But um, when I had the show, it 
you know, the men were really interested in it. So um, that's what made me sort of kind of, and I get inboxes all day <laughs> about, you know, you got stuff for the ladies. Well, you know, what can I do for my men? So I also have satin pajamas. I added those on my website as well for the men. Um, because again, it was the his and her. I had the women satin pajamas. So it would just be cute, you know, if you would be on vacation with um, mm -hmm. your significant other and you wanted to, you know, dress alike. A lot of people are doing that now. The his and hers and the mommies and me's. Um, it's really popular right now. Awesome. Talking about your show, you have an upcoming show. Do you have something in the works? I mean, Valentine's Day is right around the corner. I know yeah. this is your thing, right? It is. Every year I do a show. Um, if anybody is in the St. Louis area, um, February the 5th, it's actually next Saturday. Um, okay. From 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. The location is 2950 Durheki Road. Um, it is $25 to get in. But it's going to be a great, grown and sexy event. I have a lot of amazing vendors that will be there. So you will be able to shop. Um, you'll be able to see a great show. I also have, um, I will have food on site, shopping, entertainment. Um, I'm doing a lot of great giveaways, raffles. Um, if you've been to any of my shows, you know, it's, a, it's definitely a very classy and sexy um, show. It will be showcasing my Valentine's Day collection pieces. If you're already on my website and have been looking on Tap Entrepreneurs, um, you will see some a little sprinkles of um, my Valentine's Day collection. So those actually pieces will be um, featured that day. And then it's a Candyland theme. Um, I try to do a little something different, not just your normal fashion show where you maybe just walk down the aisle and show the pieces. I like to try to bring a theme um, so this year we're doing Candyland. Um, if you are a game board player, then you know you've heard about Candyland. And so I'm going to bring that to life <laughs> in wow. my lingerie pieces, but I'll be featuring my lingerie. So it's really, really cool. Um, I'm excited about it. I'm hoping um, everyone comes and sees <laughs> um, the show. It'll be great. From 6 to 9 p.m., um, 29.50 again, Dark Key Road. Man, we may not be able to um, see the game Candyland the same anymore. Be like sitting there playing with my grandson. Be like, okay, we, we got to put this one to the side. We get <laughs> so I, I, have a, I have a question. And you said you started actually in a brick and mortar right setting. And so you were actually you had a shop. You had you had a store over in um, pop -up shop. yeah a pop up shop. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so, and now, um, are you primarily online or do you still do the pop-up shops? And what's, what's the benefits or challenges to those, um, those various vending um, venues? Yes, um, I did. I was blessed to say, um, they called it a pop-up experience where we would, um, in the mall, I was in um, Granite City. What is the name of the mall? I can't think of the name of the mall right now, but... Um, yeah, it, it's, it's a well-known mall. A lot of people go there. And I was, it, it was just great because it was in the mall, you know, and it, we got to put our fixtures up and everything. It, it, you know, it felt really, really great. Um, but the lady that originally was doing it, 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 it was only for like a couple of months. So um, I am fully online now. Um, I have a pickup location in Florissant for my local. So if you're local, you can shop online. You do not have to pay a shipping fee and you can just meet me at my pickup location. Um, I'm not going to say, well, everything is a challenge, <laughs> um, but you you just get used to it. Um, I still, of course, I'm, I'm out here every weekend during the, also during the week sometime doing pop-up shops um, in different locations, wherever, you know, anybody is doing a pop-up shop and they want CC's private pieces, I'll definitely um, I'll definitely do it. I also do private events as well. Um, birthday parties. I host um, events myself. Like I have one coming up on Saturday. Um, I, I'm looking, well, I'll, I'll say this. I'm looking into, you know, get another brick and mortar, but, um, you know, it, it, it both have its pros and cons because, you know, when you go get your own store, of course you have to pay everything, all the 
-hmm. everything is on you. Um, so it's a lot of overhead. Mm -hmm. When you're online, um, you have less overhead. You, you may not have to really worry about all those extra um, bills and everything. But for lingerie, it, it makes it a little bit easier for me if I have a place because it's lingerie. Mm -hmm. One moment. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't, it's my allergies. But um, people want to see it. They want to, they want to feel it. They want to, you know, because it's lingerie, especially with our, our African-American women, we are all shaped differently. Mm. Um, so they, of course, they want to just make sure that they can fit it. Um, that's why I'm big on my marketing. And that's why I have all shapes for my brand ambassadors, because I want, Again, because we're all shaped differently. So I want, since you cannot actually physically come in and shop with me all the time, um, I still want to be able, I want you to be able to see the diff, you know, what the style looks like on different women. Um, so that's why I'm big on my marketing. I'm really focusing more on that this year as well. Um, so I, I will still be doing a lot of pop-ups, but I won't be doing as many because I'm focusing more on my pictures and my marketing since I no longer have a store. Well, Cece, we are so excited to have you a part of TAP Entrepreneurs. And we know that we can support you on tapentrepreneurs.com. And you yeah. are fabulous and you're magic. But where else can we find you? Do you have an Instagram or Facebook before we go that we can support you here? I do. I have Instagram and Facebook. Um, Cece's private pieces on everything. Um, also just added TikTok as well. Um, I'm still learning TikTok. <laughs> um, so if you go on there, don't laugh at me. I'm still trying to get it um but yes everything cc's private pieces across the board wonderful thank you so much for being on today it was such thank a pleasure you. meeting you you know um, lady t before we go i, I just want to ask cc a question uh -huh. tell us about your experience with tap entrepreneur because we have people that probably ask and they're like man we we want to be a part but what is tap entrepreneur and how does it work for me so tell us a little bit about your experience i don't even know i talk about you guys so much and i'm i'm trying to bring all of my boss friends that's what i call them all of my boss friends on because it is such a great opportunity um all of you guys, everybody that I've worked with, John, Linda, everybody has been very supportive, very great. Um, they they want you to be great. So they're going to push you to do whatever. And they, it's so many opportunities. Um, it's a free website. Like, who's doing that now? <laughs> like, who, everybody, like Shopify, you have to pay. And then it's a minority website. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So why not get your products out there and deal with people that are like you and especially people who want to see you do great. And it's, it's genuine. That's the thing I love about it. It's genuine. They constantly text me, you know, how you doing? What can we do to help you? What do you have going on? You know, they're constantly marketing and trying to keep you on your toes and just, just great people. It's a great opportunity. Um, I tell everybody, you know, Get get in get in tap entrepreneurs. It's a great opportunity. Awesome, awesome. awesome. Well, um, um, Coco T, this has been a great conversation. It's great. It's great. Tapentrepreneurs.com. And you yeah. you know what? I always think of tap entrepreneurs like the black Etsy. You know, that's do you think it, like that? Like a black is. Etsy. Yeah, I really, that's how I feel about it too. <laughs> yeah, it's really awesome. It's a great opportunity for people to just yeah. promote themselves. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, CC. It was an amazing interview. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate you guys. It's great.